Welcome, my name is Avery Peck, and today I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the saturation and color boost controls. It was brought to my attention a while back in some online discussion that there were inaccuracies and mistakes in my original video, so I wanted to come back and test these tools in much more detail to see if we can gain a deeper understanding of exactly what they're doing to your footage. Let's jump in. I have a saturation ramp loaded up and my goal here is to be able to clearly see what these tools do to areas of low, medium, and high saturation. Um, now I chose red arbitrarily, but we're going to examine other hues a little bit later on. Initially, um, to do this analysis, I was going to use the vector scope, but the vector scope's layout makes it a little bit difficult to see exactly what's going on with these tools. And I thought, you know, it'd be much easier if we could visualize saturation as a curve. So to help us do this, I've created a DCTL in the second node. And a DCTL, if you're not familiar, is basically a custom script that allows you to apply your own custom color transforms. So what this particular DCTL does is it calculates the saturation of each pixel the same way that you would see it um, on a vector scope. And then it converts that into a grayscale value so that we can measure it on the waveform. So you can see if I turn this on and off, that areas of no saturation become black and areas of high saturation become brighter. So what we're left with is a nice curve that represents uh, what's going on with each saturation value basically. So if I come back to my original node and I make some adjustments to my saturation, you can see those adjustments very clearly there. So let's start testing these tools. The first tool I want to focus on is saturation. In my previous video, I claimed that saturation was a gain function, that it would essentially scale your saturation values up and down in a linear uniform fashion. Now, if that's true, what we should see on the waveform is that the slope of this line will increase or decrease but the line itself will remain perfectly linear. So with my original node selected, let's take the saturation control up and down and see what happens. So you can see here that as I sweep the saturation control through its full range, that the line does remain linear and the slope increases and decreases. So this tells us that the saturation control does indeed behave just like a gain control. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this up to say 75 and I'm going to grab a still of this for reference. So we have that there. I've saved one already. I'll get rid of that. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is reset this node and now I want to take a look at color boost. So in my previous video I said that color boost was an additive function, uh, meaning that all saturation values would increase or decrease by the same amount. And if that's true, what we should see is this line will slide up and down, but the slope won't change. So in other words, we'll see something kind of like this. So let's go ahead and see if that's what happens. I'll go to my color boost control. And as I take it up and down, we can see that that's not actually what's going on. So let me first take this moment to apologize because clearly I misunderstood how color boost worked in my original video. So let's take a closer look at this and I'm actually going to bring up my still from the saturation control earlier and I'm playing this in horizontal white mode so we can compare both curves. So this is where we can start to see their differences more clearly and let me just pop this out. Color boost as the name implies is giving us this big boost in the low end. So areas of lower saturation are going to pick up saturation much faster than using the standard saturation control. And this can be very useful in certain cases. Let's say you have a scene where you have some pale skin tones that are somewhere down here on the curve, but in the background you have, say, the tail light of a car that's really saturated. And you want to be able to add saturation into the skin tones without the tail light getting completely out of hand. That's a case where color boost would probably be a wise control to go for because color boost will allow your skin tones to pick up more saturation while that tail light would remain in a manageable place. With the saturation control, you'd have to turn this control up higher to get the skin tones in the right space. And by that point, your tail light is going to be pretty much off this chart. 
Now just to be clear, one tool isn't any better than the other, they're just different, and this video is here to show you those differences and help you make more informed decisions about when you should use one versus the other. Now it's also worth noting that this behavior applies in the negative direction as well. So if I take color boost into those negative values, you can see that those areas of low saturation are pulled down more aggressively than areas of high saturation. So that same sort of boost behavior that we saw in the positive direction is also true in the negative direction. And this is something to be aware of when you're using the color boost tool. All right, so we've started to see the differences between these tools, but there's still one big question in my mind, and that is, can we recreate the behavior of saturation and color boost using other tools in Resolve? And hopefully that'll also give us a more sort of user-friendly understanding of what these tools are actually doing to our footage. Now to try and recreate this behavior, I'm gonna use the sat versus sat control. Because if you think about it, the sat versus sat curve allows us to independently control areas of low, medium, and high saturation. So I think it's a pretty natural choice to try and recreate these sort of complex curves. Now, we could just fiddle around with these curves and try to match things, but I'm actually gonna show you a really cool node tree that's gonna make our life a lot simpler. So let me go ahead and close this. I'm also gonna reset this node here, and I'll shut that still off for now. And I'm gonna set the node tree up first, and then I'll show you exactly how it works. So I'm gonna add a layer mixer, and I'm gonna reconnect the bottom node directly to our input source. Then I'm going to copy my DCTL and paste it on the bottom node. Then I'm going to change my composite mode to divide. Then the last thing we need to do is gain everything down by 50%. So I'll add one more node at the end. And a quick way to do this precisely is just to take your pivot to zero and your contrast to 0.5. Okay. So let's come back to our waveform here. And you notice that in our waveform, we have this flat line in the middle, just like the sat versus sat curve. So if we come back to our original node and we start to make some adjustments on the sat versus sat curve, you can see that there's a perfect one-to-one -one correlation between what I'm doing on this control and what the waveform is showing us. So what the waveform is actually showing us in this case is what we need to do on the sat versus sat curve to emulate whatever saturation adjustment we're making in this node. So in this case, it makes sense that they're showing us the exact same thing. So let's use this setup to determine what we need to do on the sat versus sat curve to emulate the behavior of saturation and color boost. All right, so let me reset this. And I'm gonna start by looking at the saturation control. So if I take this up and down, you can see that our line remains perfectly straight and flat and just slides up and down. And if you think about it, it makes sense because the saturation control is gaining everything up or down by the exact same amount or by the same factor, regardless of what the original saturation of that pixel is. So areas of low, medium, and high saturation are all gained up or down by the same amount. So if we take this back to 75, like we had before, and grab a still of this and play it, and I'll go ahead and reset this node real quick, you can see that in order to recreate this behavior, all we need to do is take both endpoints of our sat curve up, just like that. So now let's take a look at color boost. I'll go ahead and reset everything and we'll head over to our color boost control. So I'm gonna take this up and down and you can see right away that color boost has a much more interesting behavior. So you can see first off that the, the kind of adjustment that color boost makes in the low end is much more extreme. I mean, color boost right here is at 7.5, and you can see those areas near zero are receiving a huge boost. And of course, this exact same thing is true in the negative direction. So if we try and recreate this, let's go ahead and take it up to 15, and I'll just grab a still of that and play it. And then I'll go ahead and reset this node. I'm just using my panel to reset that. So if I try and recreate this, I'd have to take this point all the way up 
and then we can draw this really extreme curve here. So this is about as close as I can get. And you can see that I actually don't have the ability to, uh, you know, get the slope of this line quite right. So it seems to me that the adjustment that Color Boost makes in the low end is too extreme for the sat versus sat curve to recreate. And this is kind of interesting. Okay, so we've seen the behavior of saturation and color boost in a couple of different ways. I think we're getting a better understanding of specifically how they operate. The last thing that we need to take a look at is the behavior of these controls across different hues, because up until this point, we've just been focusing on this red hue, but it's possible that these controls exhibit different behaviors with different hues. So I have a couple of different gradients loaded up and I'm gonna be using my panel to just switch between them. But I have my primary colors, red, green, and blue, as well as my secondary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Uh, now these are all uh, grouped together. So I can go to my uh, group pre-clip and I can make my saturation and color boost adjustments right here. And those will be applied to all of these different gradients uniformly. So what I'm gonna do first is enable my DCTL for each of these clips. And again, I'm just using my panel to do this since it's a little bit quicker and easier. All right, so now let's start testing this. So I'll go to my group pre-clip and I'll pop out the waveform. So if I take saturation up, and then if I go through these different clips, so here's the red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow, you can see that this curve does not change. So in the positive direction, it looks like saturation applies the exact same transform, the same math, regardless of hue. If we take saturation down, and we again move between these, you can see that once again, saturation is applying the exact same curve, the same math, regardless of hue. So let's go ahead and reset that, and let's take a look at Color Boost. Take a Color Boost up, and move between these shots, or gradients I should say, and you can see that Color Boost behaves the same way, right? It's applying the same math regardless of hue. And if I take Color Boost in the negative direction, you can see that that math is still the same. So it seems that color boost and saturation apply the exact same math regardless of hue, which is good to know. Before I end this video, I wanna give a few final notes. Uh, first, I know that my original video drew some criticism and while it's never fun to make mistakes, I think it's always important to learn from mistakes. So I wanna give a big thank you to all the people who have engaged in this discussion, who have tested these tools on their own and shared their findings. I think that information has been incredibly valuable to me and to other people in helping the entire community learn more about how color boost and saturation actually work. My channel has always been about helping other people learn, so I'm glad that this has turned into a learning opportunity for myself and for others. And finally, for those who are interested in knowing more about how this DCTL works, as well as how my sat versus sat no tree works, uh, leave a comment below. If there are enough people interested, I'll make a follow-up video uh, showing you all the math and explaining exactly how these solutions were derived. Until then, my name is Avery Peck. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one.